Welcome to the Potter Blog site, February 6, 2014. An alert about some unusual earthquake activity that's been occurring along the uh, New Madrid fault line. In the last 30 days, we've had approximately six magnitude 2.5 or greater earthquakes occurring along the fault line. Uh, here we go directly to uh, USGS webpage, and you can see these earthquakes, and these are the ones we're talking about. And uh, what makes this uh, unique or alert worthy is, is that, again, in 30 days, we've had these six magnitude 2.5 or greater earthquakes occur. Now, if you go look at the 11 months prior to that, in the same exact region here, same magnitude earthquakes, uh, there was approximately 12 or 13 that occurred in the same region in the 11 months prior. So, in one month, we've had half, as, half again as many earthquakes in this region as we've had in the uh, prior year. So that uh, is what raises our alert activity. Now there's uh, some other aspects going along with this. It just so happens that uh, USGS released uh, this study at the end of uh, January that threat of earthquakes occurring in the central United States is still alive. Now these are massive earthquakes that can occur here. The last ones in 1800s, there were three of them depending on who you listen to, between magnitude 8 and magnitude 9, all three occurred at about three month intervals, uh, were felt all over the United States, shook earthquake, uh, shook church bells all the way in Boston. Uh, if there was a magnitude 8 earthquake uh, here in uh, Missouri, uh, it would take down every bridge along the uh, Mississippi River from uh, Kansas City all the way down close to the Gulf of Mexico. So, major damage potential here, consider with this. Uh, now along with that, it also just happens to be uh, Missouri's Earthquake Preparedness Month. So the very interesting trifecta here of uh, uh, occurrences we're looking at. But the, again, the key thing that drew it to us uh, was these uh, recent earthquakes have uh, increased in this area right along the fault line. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the most recent one was a, a 2.6 that occurred in Potosi, Missouri on uh, February 3rd. Now that's relatively close to us. Uh, we're up here in uh, this region. We're up here in this region. Now we did not feel this earthquake, nor did it set off our earthquake alarms. Now we have an uh, early warning earthquake alarm that uh, we keep in our basement. Uh, it's on the basement pillar. Uh, this thing can provide roughly two, up to two minutes of warning for a magnitude 8 earthquake. Uh, that occurs down in the New Madrid fault zone. Uh, it works by detecting uh, uh, not the shaking, initially the shaking waves of the earthquake, but a faster traveling wave that uh, creates a vertical motion. Now, people wonder how these things work. Well, it just so happens that I have another one of these. And let me turn some light on here. Just so people wonder what the guts of one of these earthquake detectors, at least this particular model. Um, we've had taken apart so you can see this. But this is the actual earthquake detector here. It's a spraying mass uh, system. And when the vertical waves of the uh, pre-earthquake strike, it makes this detection, makes this connection, and uh, that sets off the uh, earthquake alarm. Uh, very low chance of falsing with this because of the vertical nature. Uh, you might get horizontal movement in this box from uh, trucks and stuff going by, but not the, uh, the vertical. Uh, there's a secondary detector in here which uh, detects uh, movement in the vertical plane. Now this, is not, this doesn't uh, alert you that there's an earthquake coming, this particular sensor. That's the job of this sensor. This sensor lets you know an earthquake is ongoing makes a different alarm sound. Now one would think that that would be sort of a silly feature to have but uh, if you look at reports especially with aftershocks people are always going was that an aftershock? Did I really feel that? Well this confirms to you that yes you're you get the initial alert from that the earthquakes coming and then you get an alert for uh, that the aftershock or the shock the main shock is here with that. Now uh, we can get large warning times here in uh, Missouri, roughly up to two minutes, because the entire region is on bedrock. Uh, in California, you would get probably less warning time uh, because uh, it's not built on the same type of bedrock we have here. 
Uh, there's also a uh, an, another kind of earthquake sensor uh, works on a, a similar principle, measures the horizontal. It's got a little bit more interesting and uh, neat setup for detecting horizontal motion, but there's a greater risk of uh, falsing with it. It's also slightly less expensive. Uh, we have one of those also. Maybe we'll break it down and uh, and uh, show it in a future video. But that nor did that one go off. So a close 2 by 2.6 earthquake did not set off for early warning detectors. Uh, the one you see here on the screen is not supposed to go off until I think a magnitude 3. Uh, the other type we have uh, is adjustable. But uh, be prepared. You know, really, the, the, it, there's no telling when an earthquake is going to come. Yeah, the real question you have to face is, is, you know, is your only level of preparedness for an earthquake, especially in this cold as it is outside right now, is it that uh, you're planning to spend uh, the remainder of the earthquake uh, sheltering in a, uh, hopefully a, a not fallen down high school gymnasium with two or three thousand of your closest friends? You know, if that's your primary line of defense of something happening, uh, you might want to reconsider that.